started, so let's, let's, let's get ready to go. Here we go. Pastor Mark, we love you. We're going to keep the fire burning. Thank you, brother. And with that, I'm going to ask Pastor Bob to come to the torch. I think it's good to get up off your feet once in a while. <laughs> See that? You're all ready to go. You're moving. All right, Pastor Bob's getting ready, and uh, I was just told by someone, Pastor Bob, they want you to walk the rail. Yeah. <laughs> Who enjoyed the last week? Amen. 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 What do you remember about the revival? Something, something. You remember walking the rail. What is, anything else? What, what, go ahead, John. That God tore the uh, curtain in the temple from the top to the bottom. Amen. So it didn't come from us doing that. Right. It came from Him. Right. And by doing that, He is welcoming us, calling us, commanding us, come in, come fellowship with me. I will answer your prayer. Amen. Brother, uh, yeah. one thing I forgot to say, and I, you're probably going to get there, three people came to know Jesus yes. and Lord and Savior. That's right. Yes. That's right. So that's, uh, I'm sorry. Two young men, uh, I don't want to embarrass them, but Lamar, praise the Lord, Amen. Lo Mason, and we had Frank, uh, an individual that uh, God has been stirring for the past few months. Okay. Go ahead. I remember like Beast Town Church has a purpose. Amen. The first Amen. message. Weeks Town Church has a purpose. We're here for a purpose. Now, uh, sitting on a fence, get a kiss, and him walking. You know. <laughs> okay, okay. Eutychus, he preached. Uh, Apostle Paul preached all night long, and so he, yeah. the young man in the window fell asleep. Okay, praise the Lord. I mean, no, Joe, leave, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. leave monuments for the children. Right? Okay, that's right. Memorial, right? That's an, that's important. To have a memorial. How about something personal? Something touched your heart? Any stirring? Pastor Bob? Yeah. yeah just, just the Holy Spirit moving, and uh, he, uh, Pastor Mark, well, the Holy Spirit really just yeah. said, you know what? Uh, the worst thing we can get into is apathy. Yeah. You know, how can we sit by as a church, as an individual, and let uh, souls uh, go to a priceless eternity? So for me, it's been a renewal and a revival and, uh, and uh, trying to put things uh, in the past and get focused on what I need to do. What's that hand? The, the time is short. So I was blessed this week as uh, Pastor Patter already brought up. We have three individuals coming to the Lord. That's miraculous. Amen. That's a miracle from on high. And we have to understand that the fires that came down, it's not man-made. God brings the first fire. I'm going to show you that in Scripture. Uh, God starts the fire, but now it's up to us to continue to fan into the flame, to stoke the fires, to keep them going. What, what happens in time? We get a wet blanket, we put it over it, you know, and, and it just seems to just go out. Everybody's sitting there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> But there's ways of stoking the fire, right? The word of God. The what does a fire do? How, how many like camping? Right? Who likes to go camping? Have you ever heard of going to a place where they had a moratorium where you couldn't light a fire? I ain't going there. It's like going to movies without popcorn. Right? I, I need a fire. Right? What does a fire do? It brings light, right? It brings warmth. It also brings like a purification fire. And so God says, keep the fires burning. God says that. I'm going to show you in the Word of God, in the book of Le Leviticus. You say, well, you go to Leviticus. just want to show you one verse in there, chapter 6, if you turn there with me. That will not be our full text, but I want to read it to you. And what we're going to do, and uh, Pastor Mark brought this to my attention. We used to do this, is stand for the Word of God. I think that's good because maybe you stand there and just shake a little bit. Maybe you stir up a little bit. 
You're not going to get me to go off the rails, guys. So. <laughs> Everybody there, book of Leviticus. You should have the first five books of the Bible. Chapter 6, one verse. And we're going to pray over the Word of God. Everybody there? 613. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we ask, God, as we hear that, that we might apply this, Lord, that we may stir in, fan into those flames, the fires that have been set here in weeks to We know that a man cannot be saved unless you draw him. We know that salvation that came from on high, it was not man's words. It was not the, just the stirring of uh, an emotion, but it was a Holy Spirit movement, and we're thankful for that. And now, Lord, this morning, help us to stir into that flame, to keep the fires burning here at Weeks Town. I pray this in Jesus' name, and all the saints said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So fires have purpose, right? Just like our church has purpose. Weekstown Community Church has purpose. It is a beacon in our community. It is a light for those that are walking in darkness because we have the message of hope. You know, those without Christ are walking in darkness. They have no light. They have no life. You see, and sometimes we think that, you know what? Our truth is a different truth than the realities. Uh, it's just a subjective truth. No, our truth is an objective truth. It is the absolute truth. And sometimes I think we, we, we believe that it's just subjective because, you know, it's what I believe and I don't want to push on what I believe to someone else. If you truly believe the reality, if you die from apart from Christ, you'll be separated from God eternally if you, you truly believe that. And why say it's objective? Because Christ did raise, been raised from the grave. Our Lord and our Savior, he was crucified. Historically, we know that. He was beat. He was permanent. He was put on a cross. He was put in the, in, into the tomb. And on the third day, he rose again, which is an objective truth. It's a historical fact. And if that is truth, right, which I know it to be, why do we not share that as that? Why is it that the flame in our life that one time was stirred there seems to go out? The light again needs to burn brightly here at Weekston. It is a revival message that we cannot we cannot allow to go out. <clears throat> In Leviticus chapter 9, verse 24, it says that the fire came down from heaven. It was God lit the fire. God lit. You see, it, it wasn't man's emotions. It, it wasn't. Now, I don't take anything away from Pastor Mark. You know, praise the Lord. He's a preacher of the word. But it's the word of God that comes down. It's not, it's not man's emotions. It's, it's not because he walked on the altar there that somebody got saved. He got saved because the word of God was preached. Amen. Amen. You see? And so God lights the fire. But he does ask us to keep putting on the locks. You know, what do we need to keep a fire going? You need oxygen, don't you? Because if you put the logs too tight on one another, the fire just goes out, doesn't it? It needs to breathe. It needs the breath of God in it. And when it has the breath of God in it, it starts to stoke and flame up. Hallelujah. You know... I sure enjoyed this past week because my fire was stoked. Amen. See, sometimes I just I look outwardly and I see the world and its ways, and I start to lose some type of hope of, of anything ever changing. And, and you know what? I got myself. I mean, I just keep it all to myself. And 
But I, again, saw how powerful the Word of God is. I see how powerful God wants to move among our next generation. Two young people. What man was a miraculous, wonderful. One of our own. Two of them, actually, makes the that's, that's wonderful. I mean, the angels are celebrating in heaven. We celebrate too. We celebrate too. And this is not to come down on ourselves because our, our fire goes down a little bit and we shrink up into a corner in timidity. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in, in a letter. It's called one of the prison epistles in 2 Timothy. And we're going to turn there. And, and Paul writes to, to Timothy to go ahead and fan into that flame. Plan into the flame, the gift of God, which is placed on you from the laying on of my hands. Because sometimes it gets covered up, doesn't it? it, it and how do we fan into the flame? How, how do we stoke the fire, per se? If you look at a natural fire that's starting to go out, we, we take the poker, don't we? We kind of push it around. So, well, you say, Pastor Bob, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> well, we ask God to be like the branches because he's the vine. He says that, you know what, he prunes the branches, doesn't he? It's, it's almost like a stoking point, you know? He, he cuts off the things that are kind of dying on the vine so that we can grow. Do you ever see a rose and, and, and the beautiful roses all around? How do they get like that? Anyone know? Don't, don't they what? Trim them, right? Don't, don't they prune them? It's called pruning. You, you want a beautiful, blooming rose. It's from the trimming. It's from cutting off the old things that are dying off. The things that are worthless and an eternal value, right? So if you turn here to 2 Timothy, we're going to read a couple of the verses in chapter 1. <clears throat> By the way, I'm thankful I'm feeling better. I, I felt terrible all week, last week, during our revival service. I was sick, but I knew how important it was to get in front and get under the Word. You know, it's great for a pastor to just be able to sit there. I'm going to pastor Pat. i got to get you preaching more so I can just sit over here. <laughs> because it's, it's such a blessing, you know? And, and one of the things is, I know that I was... Uh, Pastor Mark's greatest cheerleader up here. You see? And that's our important. Uh, giving him an amen to every word that was coming out. Uh, reciting the scriptures that he was thinking about. You know what a blessing that is to a pastor? Because it encourages him. It, it encourages him. It's like, man, somebody get me. Or somebody's on board with me. Somebody's walking on the side with me. I was his greatest, that's right, his greatest cheerleader. So, okay, 2 Timothy chapter 1 says this, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith, that's the sincere faith that was in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you, to stir up the gift. Other translations that will fan into the gift. Which is in you through the laying in of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and in love and of a sound mind. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Timothy, he, he's the pastor of the church of Ephesus in the surrounding area. He, he might have been a greater leader, and, but things were happening. He was young in his faith, or not even young in his faith, in his age. And uh, Paul was writing to him saying, God didn't give you that spirit of timidity. He gave you a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Stir that gift up. It's in you. And sometimes he, he, he felt so uh, shy in some ways. He said, don't be ashamed of the gospel. 
preach the gospel, uh, which God has blessed us with. He, he tells us here to remember, remember the genuine faith of your grandmother and in, uh, of your mother, uh, you know, that stood fast. Think back of your own family, if you have anyone that has a long uh, history of faith that, that stood through the generations uh, of where faith is not popular. I think we're getting into a new generation now where faith is not the, the most popular thing uh, to be in. But it is the only thing that's going to save us. And, and we may be this next generation's last call. You know? Wouldn't you think? And uh, who is going to stand? God said, who's going to stand with me against the evil age? And so I, for one, want to stand with him of the objective faith that I believe is to be true. And, and I don't want those that are have relative faith or things that, well, your truth is not my truth. Well, they can believe that, but that doesn't make what they believe true. So friends, we need to be more educated in that. We need to stand firm on that, the word of God. And we see here to remember Pastor Pat, when he read from Revelations 2, you know what Revelations 2 was the church of Ephesus? That, that is the same church that Paul is telling Timothy not to be timid. And this might be 30 years later, the Apostle John penned the book of Revelations. And the church of Ephesus was a thriving church. It was one of the best churches there in Asia Minor. And yet Jesus said, I have something against you. They're neither hot nor cold. They, oh, they had all the right doctrines. Uh, they had uh, everything in the right theory. But they lost their first love. The fires had gone out. It was like a wet blanket was put on them. And they were just waiting for Jesus to return. Friends, I, I, many places in scriptures, it tells us to watch, right? E even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane tells us to, to, to watch and pray uh, so that we don't what? Fall into temptations. What are some of the temptations that we can, we can fall into? Apathy. That's it. We fall into apathy. You know what? I can't wait to get the lunch. Like that's going to be the highlight of our day. And sometimes it is. Friends, we, we have such a faith, an exciting faith, to see souls changed and, and transferred from death to life, from, from darkness to light. The angels in heaven rejoice to see that. We will never know until we step across into eternity how much that night meant. How wonderful that is. You see? And we don't look at it that way. I want us to start seeing that. You know? Fires are lit for another reason. Right? Fires are lit to keep you warm. Keep you warm. What, what is the Holy Spirit called? We, we sang that last... Yeah, what was it called? Comforter. Comforter. That's it. In, the, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. Doesn't that just like warm your heart? Amen. You see? We don't want to be a piece of dried up wood. What's that wood that, uh, that can't burn? It's called petrified. You get a petrified wood, you can throw up flames. It's not burning. Because sometimes even our own hearts get hard and get cold and there's no burning there. And, and we guard it and we don't allow the Holy Spirit to come in and to heal the things that are broken. Friends, if you don't understand that we're all broken, we're broken people that need healing, not just once, a continual healing. That's why we're here on Sunday. 
so that we lay our lives against one another, right? And the breath of God will come in and breathe fire and new life into the church. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yes. That's what I want for weeks now. And one thing I found this past week, and I knew, but it just brought to light again, that's not us. It's him. God wants to let his fires burn more than we can imagine. We just need to open up to him. In the book of Leviticus, where it says, keep the fires burning, the first fire that was set on that altar, when they put the sacrifices there, it came from heaven. That's the three individuals that got saved. That fire came from heaven. But then the command was to keep it going. To keep it burning, to stoke it, to fan into the flame, the gift of God which is within each one of us. What a wonderful thing. What are some of the practical ways we can do to fan in? Well, I think you. Prayer is one, right? We confess unto the Lord, we ask God to. to uh, Cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. There's a verse in the book of Acts 3.19 that says this. Confess your sins unto God so your sins will be wiped out. And a time of refreshing will come from the Lord. Hallelujah. You can say a, a time of stoking and, and fires ablaze once again that my heart will be warm. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That my heart will be warm again so I can be kind and considerate to one another. You know, this world's cruel. We go right out there. Pastor Mark was saying, you know, he, he's learning how to drive in New Jersey. <laughs> we drive with our hands here, you know. <clears throat> if I learned anything, it is for us now to keep these flames going. To stir into the gift of God. To add on fuel when it starts to go out. What is the fuel that we add on? It's the power from on high. That's it. Carl lifted it up right. The word of God. Jeremiah. I think it's chapter 20 verse no, you're not complete with this. He says this. <clears throat> if I said I would not speak anymore about the Lord, I don't know. I'm going to paraphrase this. You can look up the verses. If I say I'm not going to speak about the Lord anymore, his word is like fire within me. Fire shut up in my bones. I can't hold on to it. Indeed, I cannot. God puts a fire in us, friends. Let the breath of God allow us to breathe it out so that souls may be saved, lives may be changed, relationships be united once again. I love you guys, and, and, and it is a privilege to unite with you, to link arms with you, to lay our logs against one another so that we may burn brightly for a community in a dark world. Let the beacon shine here at Weekstown, my friends. Let us keep the fires burning. Let us stoke. Let us fan in. <coughs> Let us bless God for what he has started. And I ask him in Jesus' name, amen.